Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I will be talking about my top five projects on Raspberry Pi for 2020. So let's get started. <laughs> Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've been doing a lot of network upgrades recently to my house, so I didn't have much time for an actual project, but this list video is actually still pretty good because there was a lot of projects that I've done this year that I thought was worth mentioning again. And also it buys me more time to do my network upgrades. Now, anything we talk about in this video will be linked down in the description or a card on the top left, as well as if you want me to revisit any of these projects, let me know down in the comments below. So to begin, this is the fifth on my list, which is Windows on Raspberry Pi. This has been one of my favorite projects to do this year because we have gotten to a point where Raspberry Pi is now more stable with Windows 10 using the four gigs or eight gigs of memory. We have gone actually a really long way from where we were before without having ethernet drivers or USB drivers to how it is now. So I do thank the guys over at Windows on Raspberry Pi Discord. I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. And you could grab your latest version and they've done a lot of work to make it more and more stable, get the drivers working to be a little bit better. It's come a long way, especially now that Windows just announced that they're gonna be supporting not only 32-bit x86, they're gonna be supporting x64 applications in a couple of months from now. That means we'll be able to get a ton more applications working on the Raspberry Pi for Windows in the near future. So I definitely would keep an eye on this project. Again, if you guys haven't tried it out, I'll leave a link on the top left and down in the description below. Next up, we have number four, which is my Raspberry Pi desktop. So when I was first putting this thing together, I ended up using the desktop for a very, very long time. It's actually proven to be a very stable desktop as well as lightweight. And anytime that I needed something to be done on a Linux environment, I had my Raspberry Pi right there with the software. It was definitely stable and I didn't have any issues with it, including the fact that we have Box86 that will allow us to run a lot more applications than we're used to. Yeah, it's proven to be a very worthy desktop. I recommend you trying it if you haven't already to run your Raspberry Pi as a normal desktop. Next up on the list, which is number three, we have our USB over network. This is my favorite project because I've still used it every single day. I actually have it hooked up to my 49 port USB and I just plug my dongles there, USB keys, anything that have to do with USB, I kind of just plug it in and share it over the network so I have multiple locations that could access it. It's been one of my favorite projects to do and like I said, I use it every day. Now I do have two videos on this, one which you can manually build together and get as many USBs as you want. And the second one, which is called Virtual Here USB Over Network, it's much easier install, but it does require a payment if you wanna unlock more than one device to be shared. I highly recommend it if you do need to share stuff over the network, like a USB dongle or stuff like that. I have not had any issues with it. Second on the list, which is EXXI for Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a more recent project that I've done and I have been having a lot of fun with this guy. I'm telling you, like if you are interested in learning ESXi environment or planning to do weird projects with it, like we, right now I have a, a project with vSANS and Witness going on. But then again, if you guys want to learn how to use ESXi or do funky things with it, not in a production environment, I highly recommend you installing onto a Raspberry Pi and using that for experiments because I've been having a lot of fun with it like that. Last but not least, which is my quad SATA NAS. This project by far has been my favorite because I use it almost every single day. Between me and my friends that we have our other channel, Pandemic Playgrounds, we have to share footages between each other. So anytime that I have a footage that he needs to edit or we're doing uh, some sort of crazy space engineer build, this is our NAS that we share our footage on and we are using Nix Cloud on this. Anytime that I have something, I would upload to here, then he could download it or vice versa, he would upload it to this box and I could download it off here. So this has been proven to be a very, very worthwhile investment, especially for the way we use it. Most of the time I just have this tucked away behind this closet. It does make a little bit more of a humming noise when the fan does kick in. And sometimes I do have to unplug it so I don't pick it up with the mic that I have here. But otherwise it's been rock solid. I have not had any issues with it. Uh, I do unplug it from time to time and it hasn't braked on me. So yeah, if you are looking into doing your own little tiny NAS setup. Uh, yeah, this is proven to be pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you did. And if you guys want me to revisit any of these projects, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.